Hi and thanks for dropping by. Today I want to talk about recycling timber. Here I have a piece of old timber. It's actually a, a baseboard of, a, of an old house. This is Re New Zealand Remu. It's a softwood and I'm going to show you how I dealt with this to uh, make some parts out of. Here's the finished item that I was making from my Remu. It's made up of a lot of small pieces. You can see there are small segments making up this ring. And uh, this, on the back of it, there, there are larger segments. There, uh, this is done. There's only four on the back and twelve on the front. This is actually the face of a uh, of a wooden geared clock I'm making. The plan called for all these these segments here, uh, and and the piece needs to be laminated to make sure it's nice and strong and doesn't buckle and warp. Even if I could have got a large piece to cut this in in one piece. Um, I wouldn't have anyway, as soon as I cut it, it would have warped, twisted, it would have been a throwaway item. Second reason I didn't do that is I couldn't get a piece of Remu this big anyway, even if I tried. In fact, I can't even buy a small piece of Remu to um, glue together and, and make it out of. Uh, it's basically that hard to get where I live. I can't go down to the shop and buy Remu off the shelf. Uh, in fact, the only thing I can buy off the shelf is uh, pine. So, the idea is to resaw my piece of Renew baseboard, and this is what I ended up with. Now, I've made it 6mm thick as per the plan, and uh, it's the ideal for making my parts out of. But here's the problem knot holes nail holes, stains in the wood, splits, and uh, in this particular case a scallop here which went below the surface of the timber. But nonetheless we can still use this. Now if we're using this, if we're cutting our parts out by hand, this isn't the problem, we just lay a template on there, draw around it, cut it out and away we go. But uh, I'm using a CNC machine and, and here's the problem. I have to somehow get my parts cut from here and avoid all the bits I don't want. Now, there were three methods I came up with for doing this. The first was just pretend this was a perfectly good piece of timber, lay my parts out on it, let it cut it out and throw away the bits that were um, no good. Uh, the only problem with that is I'd probably end up throwing away more than half this piece of wood. Uh, in fact I might be lucky to get, I'd probably only get about one or two pieces in here and that would be it. Second is I could uh, lay each piece on, uh, I could bolt this down to the table, uh, have a, a small template of what each piece would look like with where zero zero would be and uh, away I'd go, lay that piece on cut it, then uh, lay it on the next piece, and, 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 and so on. And that would work. That would work really well. Uh, it would be very time consuming though, and uh, wouldn't be a lot of fun at all. So ultimately what I want to be able to do is this. I want to be able to lay all my pieces on before I start, cut it out, and have it avoid all these places here. And that's what I'm basically going to show you how I did this. So I started off with my piece of timber and I went through with a pen and I drew on all the areas that I wanted to avoid. You know, there's a, there's a split, there's nail holes, there's stains, more cracks and all the rest of it. So in this case I've, I've uh, trimmed off the end there, there's, there's cracks in from the ends there. Uh, this one here's got quite a large area drawn around it even though it's only a small area but if we actually look on the back we can see it's got quite a large scratch, uh, split on, on the back there. So having drawn this up 
next we want to take this inside to our computer, take a ruler with us, and draw up our piece of wood with all the imperfections marked out. Here I've been through and drawn up my piece of timber. All the imperfections have been marked on it. And now it's ready to have the pieces laid on it. I suggest to make things easy, just use simple squares and circles of uh, items, areas you want to avoid, otherwise drawing it up becomes quite difficult. But this was very easy to do. I can now go through and lay on my parts. And here they are here. I've just placed them on by hand. I'm using VCarve Pro. I could have nested them on. But I found actually putting them on by hand seemed to do a better job uh, in this particular instance. Once the pieces are on, I can go through and put on the tool parts, which you can see here. And it's ready to cut. And as you can see here, the final result is good. I've avoided all the areas that I wanted to avoid and managed to get my pieces cut, every one of them spot on. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. One of the things I didn't mention earlier is it's critical when you uh, have drawn your sheet out and, and worked out your tool parts and all the rest of it, get a pen and write on it the name of the, the drawing and where X and Y zero is, because I guarantee you half an hour later when you come out to cut it, or the next day when you come out to cut it, you haven't got a clue which piece of sheet, which piece of board you're meant to be using, which way up it was meant to be, uh, and where you were meant to set the cutter to start with, and which file you wanted to cut it from, because uh, I, uh, I did four sheets at one time. Uh, every one of them came out uh, spot on, it avoided all the areas I wanted to, and uh, I think the results basically speak for themselves. So if you want to use recycled timber, I'd say go for it. Uh, it's, it's well worth it. It'll save you money in the long run. Uh, you end up using timber that you probably wouldn't have used for anything else anyway. And you, you can end up with a nice, with a nice finished product that you can be proud of. Okay, well look, thanks for stopping by guys, and um, we'll catch you next time. Cheers.